I don't have to answer your questions. Her expression was more than uncomfortable. Who do you think you are anyway? The last person you're ever likely to see. My neck spasmed sharply again. So if there's anything you can tell me, it would be in your best interest to let me know now. Because after this, you won't be telling anyone anything ever again. Don't be so sure. A male voice sounded from behind me moments before someone hit me hard in the back, knocking the air out of me. So you're the one who's been making such a mess of my family. After a series of gasping coughs, I somehow managed to regain my breath. Without hesitation, I swirled round to confront the newcomer. To my amazement, his whole being appeared set on breaking almost every known stereotype imaginable. He had a doll-like perfection to him and was dressed from head to toe in pastel creams and whites. Even his dark hair appeared to have a hue of lightness about it as each curl hung perfectly in place. My hands worked their way around the handle of my axe. There was an uncomfortable feeling in the pit of my stomach telling me I was one who was supposed to look the way he did. I didn't like that thought. I liked it even less when I noticed the way his eyes had gone from their own initial wide surprise to studying me with an equal amount of curiosity. So you break the stereotype. The words were out of my mouth before I even realised I'd spoken. And you're not one of those cloaked freaks. Good for you. You know I can smell them from a mile away. It makes them way too easy to hunt down, which takes all the fun out of it. Who are you? The guy folded his arms in a manner almost too calm for the situation at hand, as his eyes continued to examine me. I want to know your name. Funny. I was just thinking the exact same thing. I couldn't help but smirk at him. It's always good to know the name of the person you're going to kill. Well, I asked you first. His lips twitched with a little bit of amusement. And I assume you were brought up with enough manners to know what that means. You asked first, so I should answer first. I twisted the grip I had on my axe, more than aware the female was still lurking behind me. Well, I guess it's only fair to you to know the name of your destroyer. It's Oban. Oban Johnson. At that he chuckled, almost in a knowing manner, bearing his fangs to me as he did. The dollmaker's son. He nodded with a deep kind of certainty. You're the dollmaker's son. Stepson, I corrected him. Oh, I've heard all about you, Oban Johnson. He took half a step towards me, eyes open with fascination. You've been making quite a name for yourself. I just didn't expect you to be this... He half reached towards me. What happened to good manners? I took a step back from him. I told you who I am, so now it's your turn. But of course. He bowed graciously, his manner resembling that of some foppish Jane Austen character. The name's Dixon. And Dixon Blakely. Well, now all that formality is out of the way, I guess it's time we get down to business. I prepared myself to fight. I don't remember saying I was finished with you. The female jumped to my back in some vain attempt to catch me off guard. It was just a shame for her I'd been anticipating her movements well enough to know what was coming. In one swift move, I managed to send her flying off of me and in the direction of Dixon. Dixon managed to dodge her in an almost elegant manner, allowing her body to continue on its undignified path straight into the side of Waterstones. You'll have to forgive Rebecca. Dixon held my gaze in an enticing manner. She's so rather new at this and has to learn a thing or two about our trade. Although maybe that's my own fault for keeping her too close and not allowing her to spread her wings. You trade in death. I gave him a more than disgusted look. What's there to learn? I'm sure you already know the answer to that better than anyone, don't you? For a moment I hesitated. I knew what he was trying to get at. That it was my trade to kill creatures like him. But his statement had hit more nerves than he intended, and no reply I could give would truly be the right one. I've been raised to protect and not to destroy. My neck spasmed sharply at my own choice of words. And if protecting people means taking out scum like you, then so be it. I can live with that. Raised to protect and not to destroy. Dixon echoed my words, finding an unintentional meaning in them. Now that is an interesting phrase. Tell me. What would it be like if you'd been raised to destroy and not to protect? That's a dangerous question to ask. I tightened my grip on my weapon as something about Dixon made me more than unsure of myself. And not one you'd want an answer to any time soon. Again, Dixon laughed. His laughter rolled out of him in his way that made every nerve in my body twitch with tension. You're trying to intimidate me, aren't you? Well, Earth would give you that idea. My neck spasmed for what felt like the millionth time, only this time there was something a lot more mechanical about it. 
your choice of words, Oban Johnson. Dixon smiled at me as though everything about this situation were completely ordinary. And I can see you are a very interesting fellow. But unfortunately, I don't have time for you right now. The remains of my nest need rounding up. Again. He turned. What's the matter? Are you too cowardly to take me on? I again readied myself for attack. Oh, don't mistake this for fear. He glanced back towards me. But I get the feeling our relationship will get more interesting with time. And I want to play a very long game with you, Oban Johnson. I hope you can understand that. Play? I had to fight against every instinct in my body to stop myself from losing control at that word. Yes, I tried to keep my voice sounding normal. I would enjoy that. A boy after my own heart. Dixon laughed again. Maybe when all this is done, I will make you one of my own. I have no intention of becoming a Danison. A chill ran through me as I met his gaze. I do, however, have every intention of winning this game. Game. Dixon echoed my word with delighted amusement. Doesn't that word just make all of this sound almost too... easy? It is. My voice crackled as my neck spasmed even more mechanically. But that doesn't mean it won't be fun. I'll hold you to that. He smirked. Rebecca, come! With that, they both disappeared, and I was left trying to work out what the hell had just happened. I unmanifested my weapon and gripped my hands to the sides of my head. For a few moments, I worked hard at pushing all thoughts I might have away and massaged my temples. I will not be like that, I gritted my teeth. I will not give in. I will be better than them. I will not be like that. Even as I was saying it, I knew I was being drawn in by my worst instincts. It was a sensation I'd had on more than one occasion before and found almost impossible to resist. I will not give in. I clenched my hands into fists and pulled them away from my head. I will not give in. Not this time. Not again. From somewhere nearby, I heard the hissing of a couple of cats. Everything in me went into autopilot. If I couldn't resist the temptation, then maybe I could make it less bad. After all, who would miss a couple of strays? I'd probably be doing the world a favour if I... Oban. James's voice sounded from beside me as his hand gripped onto my raised right wrist. You're stronger than this. I know. My eyes glanced up towards the carving knife I was now holding. I just thought, if I couldn't stop it, then maybe... The knife disappeared again, and he released my arm. I gave a heavy sigh and allowed it to fall to my side. For a few long moments there was silence between us. I could almost hear what my stepfather was thinking, and I knew he was more than disappointed in me. I was disappointed in me too. I didn't think I could lose it so easily over so little. That dick's in something else. I lowered my gaze. What? James eyed me up. The Danison I just met. His name was Dixon, and there's something about him that's just... I don't know how to explain it, but if he's having this kind of effect, it probably means he's old and powerful. If that's the case, you're going to need help taking him out. James cut me off. Especially if he's going to cause you to become like this every time you meet him. We can't risk anything. You know that. I know. I felt more than ashamed. But you still need to train the others. So how can you come out with me each night? I wasn't thinking me, Oban. Jade. I gritted my teeth at the thought. You want Jade to come out with me? She'll have to take over from you sooner or later, Oban, so why not start her off now when you can keep an eye on her? It's not me keeping an eye on her I'm worried about. It's her keeping an eye on me. Then you'll just have to make sure she doesn't figure it out, won't you? I guess. I squirmed, knowing how unsuccessful I'd been at keeping my secret from recruits in the past. But I hesitated. But what? Why were you out here in the first place? I met his gaze. Has something happened? Yes. James nodded with nervous repetition. Yes, something has. What is it? I felt more than a little concerned by his almost numb reaction. For a long time, my stepfather was silent. I could see his whole face struggling with the thought of having to tell me. For a moment, I could almost believe I wouldn't get to know. That he would ask me to drop it, or expect me to ask him to. Then his lips pressed together in anticipation of the words as he took a deep breath in. Mary's veil. My stepfather's expression was a cross between fear and anger. They wanted to go to Marysvale as soon as possible.